ADHD to me it's like it's just it's the complete stark difference between the reality of ADHD and how tough it is and that perception of people that uh, you know the huge chunk of people just think it's a little boy running around they wouldn't let me out of hospital until I speak to somebody about what was wrong with me but I didn't know you know I've tried to get help and no one's ever been able to help me do you just think it is like naughty kids or you just think it is like hyperactivity and you don't think of it as like what I've been through I overdosed twice I mean, those are figures you'd expect to hear about depression rather than ADHD. You know, it's surprising to, to find that ADHD can be the, the cause of suicide. My name's Ben and I've got ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And I decided to go on a journey to find out the struggles that undiagnosed people have, which will be shown in the following documentary. After everything I discovered, I decided to go on a skydive with my crewmates Bruno and Harry to raise money for an ADHD charity, which you'll see at the end of this video. So keep watching. Hello, this is my special video. I grew up with my parents and little sister Charlotte in Seven X, Kent. I had a pretty good childhood. I remember I was super into building things like Lego and driving, which stemmed from seeing Carlson films and Top Gear. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> it was more as I got older and became a teenager that I realised I had differences to other people my age. I just never fit in and I found it hard to make friends because it seemed like everyone thought differently from me. My teachers were always telling me off about being lazy and not paying attention in school, even though I was trying my best. It just felt like no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't perform like I wanted to. I got diagnosed in 2015, so I was about 14 at the time. I only really remember going in for screening and having meetings to get medication, so I decided to meet my parents and have a chat about what it was like to get me diagnosed and what went on behind the scenes. So, I've come home. Um, Time to say hi to parents. Oh, Hello. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I did forget my key again. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. so I worked out how I work. So I operate best in chaos. Where there's lots of things going on. I was like, okay, cool. Now's it. Now it's like event tires. I go into right. it, you know? yeah. The first initial thought was that you might have Asperger's and you were tested for that. And they told us definitively, no, you didn't have it. So okay. it was then, you know, another said, well, well, what is it then? Let's mm. help explore. I remember one of the teachers in Mr. Farmer or something. He's, yeah. he's his son, I think, had ADHD. Okay. And he said to me one time, he said, um, "Just I'm not, you know, officially allowed to diagnose or anything, yeah. but I'm pretty sure Ben's got ADHD because I can see so many similarities with okay. him and my son." It took about six years for you to get a diagnosis from when we first okay. knew there was something start, not yeah, quite process. right with your attention. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. yeah. I, f I feel like a lot of the information was given to you guys, but I didn't receive much about, I didn't understand what it was and I didn't know how to deal with it myself. Yeah, yeah, it's probably true. I think in fairness, I don't think we fully understood either. But that was one of the things that a lot of the stuff focused on getting a diagnosis, mm. but then after that, it didn't really give you much information about what you could do to help. Do you think it would have helped you had you learned more about it younger? Oh yeah, yes, yeah. I kind of think like it was a, um, it was a case of me not having a clue. Like I just thought, this is what everyone must feel like, kind of thing, and that would be like the kind of norm. And somehow everyone else finds it easier than I do. I just kind of feel like I'm a bit inadequate. I think we just tried to support as much as we could. We were very reliant on the school to help us think through strategies that work for you in the classroom and at home. And then now you're older, I think you're finding your own strategies. The problem is that they are working well but I've, I've had to find them on my own. I think from the schools specifically because that's where I, you know other people my or kids and everything would, would be working most of the time and need to be able to have those those tools. They, they should need to have more available. Going from GCSEs to A-levels I said I know you don't like some of these subjects mm. and it was really hard for you to to work on them. Mm. I remember badgering you constantly to do homework and I felt awful in a way I didn't want to do it do you know what I mean but I'm going to sort of break my heart a little bit it was going to um one of the doctors and uh he asked you I think you were probably about 
10 at the time or something, I don't remember, nine. And he said um, to you, what would make your dad happy? And you said, doing my homework. <laughs> so I was like, oh man, you know, that's not what, you know, oh. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, that's the last thing I want you to say, you know. Better talk. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the last thing as a parent you want to hear is, oh, my son's happy when my son thinks I'm happy when he does his homework. You really want to know. Yeah. <laughs> you really want to know that he's happy, you know, you make him happy when you do fun things. Yeah, of course. Or play or So that was um fairly big um i think i've learned a lot which is the main thing so i've learned firstly i forgot how many years it took for me to get diagnosed i was very surprised by that there was such a long time as well because i thought it was like one to two years so it was a lot longer i, th I think it kind of it was it was a good thing to have that conversation because it was very um it, it reminded me of how much the parents had done to try and help um get me the help I needed. So I was doing some research about getting an adult ADHD diagnosis. Um, it took me six years to get diagnosed according to my parents, but that was back in 2015. Um, but according to this recent article from the BBC, the waiting list to get diagnosed is still very long. So that means people can't get medication or any sort of help for years, even after suspecting or maybe realising they might have ADHD. During this research, I found out about the charity ADHD UK. So I went to London to interview Henry Shelford, the co-founder. I'm Henry Shelford. I am 49. I'm co-founder and CEO of ADHD UK. So ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I think the first thing I define it as is like the worst named mental health condition. It's, it's so negative, deficit disorder, and is wrong, right? So, you know, hyperactivity isn't a requirement. Um, uh, predominantly hyperactive is 15% of people with ADHD, so there are three kinds, predominantly hyperactive, predominantly inattentive, impulsive, uh, which is 20 to 30%, and then combined, which is uh, a bit of both. So what does ADHD mean to you personally? ADHD, to me, it's like, it's just, it's the, complete stark difference between the reality of ADHD and how tough it is and that perception of people that uh, you know the huge chunk of people just think it's a little boy running around and that uh, women and girls don't exist with ADHD men don't exist with ADHD people in the workplace don't exist with ADHD the reality is encapsulated in our in the figures around suicide where we know that one in ten men or boys with ADHD will at some point try and take their own life and one in four women or girls at some point try and take their own life and the majority of funds to the charity are from parents whose children have taken their own life. The statistics that Henry told me about suicide really surprised me so I decided to do some more research. I found several articles highlighting the link between ADHD and suicide and one article says that people with ADHD are five times more likely than those without to attempt suicide. I think people need to be more aware of just how serious ADHD can be. I wanted to hear from someone who's really suffered while they're undiagnosed. Hello. I met my friend Natasha and her son Noah in the park, and then we went up to her flat to talk about what living with ADHD has been like for her. Hi, my name's Tash, and I've got ADHD. Red. Red. This one? Red. You know. Hey, red. You're so clever. So I got diagnosed when I was 38. Thank you. Is that for mummy? You're so lovely. Die, die, die. Throughout my whole life, I've done alcohol, gambling, drugs, shopping, like you name it, I've done it. Taking drugs and I took spears on people like nearly 20 years and I didn't want to take it, but I've got to a point where I thought I'm taking this because it kind of calms me down. Then I gave up 
drugs and then I started drinking. So I thought, oh, you know, that's just, this is not as bad as drugs, you know. And yeah, so drinking just got out of control. I just wanted this horrible feeling to go away of like, why am I not like everybody else? I went into hospital twice, because twice I tried to, I overdosed twice, because I got to a point, like a real low point in my life. And it was the second time where they wouldn't let me out of hospital until I spoke to somebody about what was wrong with me, but I didn't know, you know, I've tried to get help and no one's ever been able to help me. Doctors were just saying depression, you know, they didn't have any clue really. I think if I was diagnosed like early in life, it would give me a chance to understand my behaviours and, and if I was put on medication, you know, that would have helped and, you know, I wouldn't have had to self-medicate with, like, drugs and alcohol and gambling and everything as I got older. Medication does work. It's the only form of treatment that I've had at the moment that is working. In the UK, it's estimated that 3-4% to of adults have ADHD. However, this doesn't actually reflect the full number of people that have it. After making this documentary, I realised just how hard things can get and how serious it is for people with undiagnosed ADHD. So I decided to do something to help. What you may not yet know is that we are about to do a 15,000 feet skydive, which is the UK's highest, um, and we've come up to Lancashire to, uh, to do that, to raise money for ADHD UK. So the money we've been raising will go towards support groups, ADHD coaches and research on ADHD. 830? Nice. 830 quid. Out of 500? Yeah. ADHD is a hidden battle. On the outside you look fine, but on the inside it's a constant war. Your mind is like a messy drawer full of information and it's over flooding. You look around and you see that everyone else has their notes in organised piles. How is it so easy for them? You're always forgetful and it seems like you don't pay attention to anyone, but you're trying. You're stuck in a black fog and then the guilt sets in. People tell you you're not trying hard enough and you start to believe it. ADHD isn't just talking too much and being fidgety and forgetting your keys sometimes. ADHD holds you back from living to your full potential. It's like your brain and body are intermittently disconnected. It's not trendy and it's not a personality trait. It's a disorder that can ruin lives. It's the undiagnosed epidemic.